thank you for the time today. It's great to meet you. It's a pleasure. Pleasure, of course. Thanks for having me. So going into the second season of La Brea, I'm really curious, I guess, to start out with, you know, what was the second season like to make? Well, we, well we're still shooting the second season. <laughs> oh, you're still so, shooting? I thought it all wrapped. So how far no. in are you on shooting? Sorry? How far in are you on shooting? We are. We just finished episode nine, so we got we got five more to go. Uh, so we, we yeah. So we're, we're 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 getting close. We're getting close. Has it been different this season, or what was it? Pretty much, you know, the same yeah, kind of actor, or no, no, no. It's a couple of things are different. One is that last year when we shot uh, Melbourne in particular it was in like the most stringent lockdown in the entire world. So I think it was the most locked down city in the world. And so for our entire first season one of the show, it's a miracle they got it shot because we were like under a heavy, you know, 5K lockdown situation. This year, obviously, it's, it's, it's better, but there's still got a lot of COVID rules. But the show is just bigger and it's more expansive and it's more chaotic. It's more adventurous. From my point of view, my character has gone down to 10,000 BC. So I got to work with everybody. Last year, I was sort of on a separate you know, isolation is a little story now. I'm down there. So from my point of view, it's been it's been great. And uh and David Applebaum and stuff has kind of just expanded the whole world. So it's yeah, it's very different. <laughs> very different. And I mean, I love the fact that obviously in season one, he's mostly this character is approaching life in one way that he's looking at these visions as some part of his story, when in fact it's it's actually his memories. Does that right. change the character of the season and playing him that he's actually playing more? Yes. You know, he's more centered, maybe. It, it actually has massively. It's actually been a really interesting arc. And, and he's a very different character to last year, to be honest with you, because for a start, everything, you know, the start of last year, he was dealing with whether or not the visions are real and and trying to kind of like, uh, um, you know, recenter himself as a father with, with Izzy and trying to also see could he get his son and daughter back? Now he's back in 10,000 BC and Gavin grew up there because we realized that all those visions were actually real. So all of these memories of being in 10,000 BC start to come back because that's actually where he was as a kid. So he's kind of almost like this is more of a, this is more the environment thing that Gavin exists within. Um, so it's a little different. It's a little bit different. That's cool. I mean, can you say, are we going to, is there any more of Isaiah in this in any way, or is it really just Gavin now? Uh, I don't know if I'm going to say that. We, okay. we, we, totally we have fair. so many things going on with spoilers and stuff. We have a whole list. I'm like, I'm not sure what I'm going to say or not say. And especially with this show, you get to episode nine. And there's so many things that have happened that that have been fantastic and and, and exhausting and a, and a roller coaster that it's like, I actually can't tell you so many things because it would just change. I got to look back. Whenever I get a script, I, I want to read it till I know what's going on. So now you're kind of almost, we're sort of ahead of it. So I got to go back and go, okay, from episode one and two, I was really excited to, to learn these things. Now I know them. I can't tell you because it'll ruin the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> Do you, uh, you know, in terms of action, are you, is, it, is there a lot of action you're going to be involved with? Uh, so much how does more. that work? So much more. I have loads of stuff. We have all these great, we got some great stunt guys, but they've been given us these incredible stunt pieces through this year. It's a lot of fights. There's a, there's a lot of, a lot of, uh, a lot of energetic stuff. I was started this year. I was like, all right, I can go back to training. I get into a training program for this year. So I started doing that because I was like, this is going to be, it's, it's full on. It's full on. Is that, you know, I know different actors approach action in different ways. And obviously there's a certain point where the stuntmen have to come in and do their job, but, for you, do you like to be more involved with stunts, or where do you kind of I, draw the line? Yeah, you know, they used to they used to be allowed to do a lot more stunts than you are now. I think I think you have to be a lot more careful with stuff, and I think because productions are generally more careful anyway with COVID, so they're even more careful with stunts right. because you know it, it, once stuff starts to shut down, it's just very expensive. So, and and generally, like we have really amazing stunt guys, so you kind of almost. Part of that process is working with your stunt guy and letting him do his job. I mean, they're, they're, you got to remove your ego from it and go, this is also someone's career as well. And they're really, really good at what they do. So there's And they that make kind of, you look good in the end, really. Yeah, exactly. So there's that kind of symbiotic relationship. Now, I love doing all my own stuff. And if there's stuff that I'm allowed to do, which which is quite quite a fair bit of it, and a lot of the fighting stuff, that I will do that. But then there's other times where you're like, you know, he's better than me at doing this. And this is also, this is also like, this is also his profession. And so you're just trying to find that balance between making it look really, really cool, 
wanting to engage in it because you're, you know, you're a guy and you want to do these cool stuff, but also doing it properly that works for the production, you know? Well, I'm sure you can't say anything, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Can you Go ask me? Ask me. I can either say yes or no. <laughs> can you tease if there's going to be a family reunion? Is this is this the season where that could there happen? There will. There will be a family reunion. Yeah. I, think te- I think I'm allowed to tease that. I mean, that's what we're building towards. I mean, the the. I'm not sure in what context that reunion takes place that will appease you. Right. <laughs> but, <laughs> but there is there is definitely reunions of sort, and it's it's you know there's so many more things that that kind of build upon that 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 kind of you know threaten the family again this year and in different and in different elements that that then come in into play which which create the world make the world even bigger mm-hmm. you know and um, that it becomes myself and natalie were talking about this the other day it becomes that sometimes the personal relationships end up taking a backseat momentarily because there's a certain level of you have to kind of get through these 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 moments that are happening in the world and there's only so much the characters can cope with at one time so it then makes all the interpersonal relationships like with with, with you know because gavin and levi are going to end up probably seeing each other again there's gonna be all a lot of kind of tension and so forth like gavin gets to meet all the people down there for the first time but when you're in these life or death situations those relationships um either evolve or devolve accordingly mm-hmm. and then kind of end up adding tension to these sort of survival situations you're already in so it's become a really interesting dynamic down there I, i've found you know um and and for me it was exciting because last year i didn't get to work with a lot of the other guys this and this year i do and it's 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 been quite invigorating that's cool i did you i mean there's a lot of stuff obviously that when you're acting in this there's some stuff that you're just not going to see because it's it ends up being you know computer generated and all that other stuff but did you need at all any i guess you know, did you have references for what these things are going to look like? Yeah, yeah. The director would stand up in the corner and wave his arms around, you know? No, they, no, they, they actually did. What they did was they actually printed out or they kind of made these sort of uh, uh, flat sort of cardboard models for the right size of the creatures. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so so they sort of build half it on this kind of cardboard thing. Like, you know, when you're at, um, you know, if you see somebody at like a, a, like a, 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 Mardi, a Mardi Gras, festival or, or like st patrick's day parade or something people holding up like or, or the dragon you know this chinese new year festivals and they got the kind of dragons like that on the on the sticks so they do something similar with the animals we kind of get a sense of the perspective and where they're moving to that's way better than what it used to be because i know they always used to have the the, the mirror balls that they would be moving around we, we we still got the mirror balls oh yeah 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 oh, yeah <laughs> they're never going away well, they, I guess they work to agree. At least you have a sight line at that point. But yeah, you know, that's true. Otherwise, in terms of your work, uh, what have you been? Uh, I know you've done a few things in between. What else has been uh, coming down the line for you? Yeah, I had, I had a movie that, called The Cellar that we, we had. We premiered in South by, and, and that's currently, I think, coming out in South America next month. And that's been doing really well. But then we have a, a movie on Netflix coming out uh, next month called I Used to Be Famous with, with Ed Screen. Um, which I'm really excited about. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been good. Was that when was that filmed? We shot that uh, after I finished La Brea last year. Oh, so you just, did. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, I've been I've just been living in winter forever. You know? <laughs> yeah. So hopefully, you have some projects coming up that are more uh, warm and summery. <laughs> That's the plan. Is the plan eventually to send me something on the beach? Right. I'm just gonna say you've got to have something in Hawaii or something. You know. Yeah. Oh God, please don't, don't tempt me. <laughs> well, thank you so much for the time. It was really awesome chatting. The the series is fascinating. I love the vibe. Oh, I appreciate it. I think you know what I think you'll enjoy this year. This year, it's kind of found its feet in a really interesting way. It's become. You know, I think it's kind of becoming what it's supposed to from an adventure point of view. So I, I, I'm excited about it this year. It gives me a little bit of Lost vibe. And that's what uh, that was one of my favorite shows. So I love that, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Good. Me, too. I loved it, too. And it's kind of it's kind of now it's found its way. It's kind of going down that road a little bit. So, yeah. That's yeah. cool. Well, have yeah. a great day. Thanks so much. You, too. Pleasure, Andrew. Take care of yourself. Cheers. Buddy.